from the lens of a conservative Republican atheist, is there anything that the right you think could do to improve, you know, their own relations to atheists and to kind of take a page of what cancel culture has done via the left to make sure as well that maybe the right doesn't repeat the same mistakes? Well, uh, it's odd to me, uh, it's ironic at least, that uh, cancel culture is, uh, of course, a creature of, of the woke left, and uh, and some of them have a background in fundamentalist Christianity against which they have re rebelled in a radical way, and uh, they still maintain some of the same structures, you might say, mentally. Uh, cancel culture is just a new name for what fundamentalists have always practiced as second degree separation, which meant that uh, uh, we're good fundamentalist Bible believing Christians and we want nothing to do with those uh, those liberals and their denial of the, of the authority of the Bible and, and all of that stuff. Uh, and if you, however, are willing to deal with them, well, then we don't want anything to do with you either. I right. mean, your own opinions may be sound, but uh, you shouldn't, like, how can two walk together unless they are agreed, as Amos, I think, says. And uh, that's, uh, that's you're just uh, cutting off your nose to spite your face with that. And uh, that's what, uh, I haven't heard of, of that recently, but you used to hear it quite often with real hyper-fundamentalists like Bob Jones University. And so they hated Billy Graham. Uh, strangely enough. I mean, he is like the evangelical in the minds of a lot of people, but uh, in their eyes, he made the mistake of sharing the podium with United Methodists, uh, American mm -hmm. Baptists, and others who, who were much more uh, diverse and liberals. Like the, the United Presbyterian Church had Angela Davis speak uh, once, and the others said, what the hell? What are you doing? And uh, so they said, look, uh, naturally, we don't want anything to do with the likes of her. But since you don't seem to mind, we don't want anything to do with you either. And that's cancel culture. They yeah. just didn't call it that at the time. And it's it's shunning like uh, Mennonites and Jehovah's Witnesses sometimes do. Uh, that uh, you, something wrong with you, well, the door is uh, henceforth slammed. And uh, that's that strikes me as something I would like to help people get over, uh, especially since one of the most amazing and positive things I see in political discourse, especially on Fox News, which has the uh, the misrepresentation of being just a propaganda mill for the right. Uh, it, it, I find it amazing that they'll have um, openly gay Republicans and conservatives on there, Tammy, Bruce, uh, uh, the various other ones. Uh, that you know a guy, I uh, can't think of his last name, uh, uh, but uh, various ones who make no bones about that, and even with uh, with uh, Caitlyn Jenner, yeah, uh, that little Bruce, right? It's it's like, oh, what the heck? You're you're with us, and and even more amazingly, uh, the fact that uh, people you used to think of as liberal lunatics, like. Um, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to start forgetting that Glenn Greenwald, uh, this guy seemed to be an America hating paranoid, but now it turns out he was right. And yeah. so, or uh, uh, Naomi Wolf, like now she's an ally uh, because uh, some people understand that the woke and the left are not the same thing as liberals. And now uh, liberals and conservatives uh, can make common cause. Well, I'd like to see that happen with uh, atheists and conservatives, but uh, it's, you listen to uh, Sean Hannity and, and a bunch of the others, uh, Laura Ingram, I like them, I agree with them politically on almost everything, but when they start saying, well, the uh, the the left is attacking God and therefore undermining our um, our basis for morality. I understand what they mean, and there's something to that 
sociologically what Peter Berger calls the sacred canopy in, in all right. traditional societies. You had like a kind of a dome of values, laws, mores, customs, etc. And the capstone of it was the belief that God or the gods, or whatever, had created things and given these laws to Hammurabi or Moses or whoever. And therefore, uh, that's what we have to do. And that's how we know that uh, murder is wrong and uh, oh, helping people is right. Like, you wouldn't know that otherwise if you didn't believe in God. And uh, I think they, I, I am, am quite sure I can explain to people. How, I did a column once um, in my Zarathustra Speaks uh, column. Mm -hmm called Aquinas for Atheists. And I tried to show how this man, genius that he was, showed how morality is not arbitrary with or without God. Like it could be arbitrary if you just said, God said, mm, uh, how about thou shall not steal? Uh, thou shall do no murder. Uh, mm -hmm. But tomorrow I may change my mind. It's whatever I say. I, I make the rules. That's arbitrary. That means right. nothing is inherently yeah, right. And we'll kill you if you don't agree with us. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in fact, like Aquinas saw, yeah, that, that can't be right. Uh, you're going to wind up a Shiite terrorist if you, you look at it that way, uh, or you should perhaps. Uh, but uh, Aquinas said, no, no, no. Yes, God created us. He created us as a particular kind of creature, a social animal. And that means that certain things are going to be uh, optimum for a functioning society, maximizing freedom and so forth, a social compact. If he'd have made us as some other kind of critter, maybe we wouldn't need that. Right. But the point is, given what we are, our morality is pragmatic and makes sense. You know, it doesn't depend on some big guy in the sky saying, oh, you better do this. Uh, and so even even if you don't believe in the guy in the sky, you've got everything left, the social compact, pragmatic yep. reality. It's not subjective. It's not arbitrary. And that's what uh, conservative Christians are afraid of. They, they think that, oh, no, it, it rests entirely on God's whim. And no, yep. no, it doesn't. And that's why we can on the basis of the issues, we wind up with you in many of these things. Don't happen to agree theologically, but what the heck? You don't have much trouble getting along with Mark Levin, who's a Jew. He doesn't believe in Jesus. That doesn't right. bother you. Uh, why should this? And I would love to try to get that across. And it might come. I wouldn't be too surprised.